Hello. Today, we explore the meaning of Shavuot. There are three pilgrimage festivals prescribed in the Torah, Pesach, Shavuot, and Sukkot. At those times, the people from all over the land of Israel travel to the temple in Jerusalem to celebrate. The Torah tells us that Pesach commemorates the exodus from Egypt, and Sukkot commemorates the 40 years of wandering in the desert when God made us dwell in flimsy booths. But what does Shavuot commemorate? Most Jews will say it commemorates the giving of the Torah on Mount Sinai. In fact, the holiday is also called the time of the giving of, of our Torah. Zeman Matan Toratenu. But that is nowhere to be found in the Torah itself. Here is all it says about the holiday. First, we hear about it in the book of Exodus. Quote, you will observe the feast of the harvest, Hag Hagatzir, of the first fruits of your work, of what you sow in the fields. You shall observe the feast of weeks, Hag Shavuot, of the first fruits of the wheat harvest, and the feast of in gathering, Hag HaAsif, at the turn of the year. Then it is mentioned in the book of Leviticus, quote, and from the day when you bring the sheaf of elevation offering on the morrow after Shabbat, you shall count off seven weeks. Sheva, Shavuot. They must be complete. You must count until the day after the seventh week, 50 days. Then you shall bring an offering of new grain to the Lord, two loaves of bread as an elevation offering. You shall also present seven yearling lambs without blemish, one bull of the herds and two rams, with their meal offering and libations. You shall also offer one he goat as a sin offering and two yearning lambs as a sacrifice of well-being. On the same day, you shall hold a celebration. It shall be a sacred occasion for you. You shall not work at your occupations. This is a law for all time in all your settlements throughout the ages. Then in the book of Numbers, quote, on the day of the first fruits, Yom Habikurim, your Feast of Weeks, Shavuot. When you bring an offering of new grain to God, you shall observe a sacred occasion. You shall not work at your occupations. Finally, in the book of Deuteronomy, you shall count off seven weeks. Start to count the seven weeks when the sickle is first put to the standing grain. Then you shall observe the Feast of Weeks, Shavuot, offering to God your free will contribution. You shall rejoice before your gods with your son and daughter your male and female servants, the family of the Levites in your communities, and the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow in your midst, at the place where your God will choose to establish the divine name. End of quote. On Shavuot, it's customary to read the Book of Ruth. Why? Because the action is set at the time of the gathering of the grain, and the harvest is part and parcel of the story. So to summarize, the name of the festival, Shavuot, means weeks and refers to the seven weeks of the counting of the Omer, beginning on the second day of Pesach. It's also called Hag HaBikurim, the Feast of the First Fruits, and Hag HaKatsir, the Feast of the Harvest. It celebrates the season of the grain harvest in Israel, which lasted seven weeks. That season began with barley on Passover and ended with wheat seven weeks later. It was a happy time to be celebrated by great communal rejoicing and a feast. Work restrictions applied, like for Shabbat and other holidays. The Mishnah says that on Shavuot, pilgrims offer their first fruits, Pikurim, to the Kohanim in the temple in Jerusalem. These fruits were the seven species mentioned in the Torah, wheat, barley, grapes, figs, pomegranates, olives, and dates. But nothing is said about commemorating the giving of the Torah. Yet at some point, Shavuot did come to be interpreted as also commemorating the giving of the Torah. The Talmud says clearly, Rabbi Lazar said, Shavuot is the day on which the Torah was given. But why doesn't the Torah itself say that? Sforno says that God may not have wanted to tie Shavuot to the giving of the Torah because that gift did not accomplish its purpose at that time, given that the people started worshipping a golden calf soon after the revelation. 
Others say that the timing is about right. The Torah was indeed given about 50 days after the Exodus. Also, when the Jews were exiled from the land, most stopped being farmers, and the agricultural reason for Shavuot became less relevant in their lives. An ingenious explanation begins with a story in the Talmud. The Torah says that Shavuot should start the day after Shabbat. But which Shabbat is that? It's not specified. There is a long discussion in the Talmud about that point. The Sadducees interpreted the phrase the day after Shabbat literally to refer to the first Shabbat within Pesach, not the first day of Pesach. One elder, elderly Sadducee told Rabban Yohanan ben Zakkai, quote, Moses, our teacher, was a lover of the Jewish people, and he knew that Shavuot is only one day. Therefore, he arose and established it after Shabbat to allow the Jewish people to enjoy themselves for two days. End of quote. So the Sadducees believed God added a day to Shabbat to give the people a full weekend off after their hard labor in the fields. Then this did not fly with the Pharisees, the rabbis, because if you assume that the Shabbat in the verse is the first Shabbat in Pesach, it will vary from year to year, and so will the timing of Shavuot. So the rabbis decided that the Torah meant the first day of Pesach, interpreted as a Shabbat, a day of rest, which it also is. This put, this put the day of Shavuot at the sixth of Sivan. Rabbi Menachem Kasher from Poland and Israel suggests that the rabbis wanted to counter once and for all the Sadducees claim that Shavuot is always on a Sunday. So they tied Shavuot to a fixed historical event, the giving of the Torah. The Talmud says, quote, the sage starts on the sixth day of the month of Sivan, the Ten Commandments were given to the Jewish people. This story underscores the intense rivalry between the Pharisees, who were the rabbis who built the Talmud, and the Sadducees, who were priests and aristocrats, rich and powerful people who refused to accept the oral law and the notion of the resurrection of the dead. Rabbi Yohanan ben Zakkai called the el elderly Sadducee a fool who prattles with frivolous speech, adding that, and if Moses, our teacher, was a lover of the Jewish people, why did he delay them in the wilderness for 40 years? The elderly man said to him, my teacher, you dismiss me with this retort? In the end, the counting of the Omer was interpreted as counting the days until the Torah was given. But one may ask, how did the Israelites know when or even whether they were going to receive the Torah? Also, the reading of the Book of Ruth was interpreted as being motivated by Ruth converting and accepting the Torah, just as the Jews did at Mount Sinai. How is Shavuot observed today? The only mitzvah of Shavuot is to obtain from work and rejoice. The rabbis added special prayers to the liturgy, including Kiddush. In Israel, secular kibbutzim celebrated as a harvest and first fruit festival, as in days of old. Non-traditional congregations hold confirmation ceremonies for post-bar mitzvah students on this holiday. A mnemonic for the traditional customs is aharit, meaning lasts. Aleph for akdamut, reading special poems during services, Head for halal, milk, eating dairy products. Resh for root, reading the book of Ruth. Yod for yerek, greening, decorating with greenery. And Tav for studying Torah all night on the eve of the holiday. Let's study each of them in turn. First, reading special poems. Ashkenazim read Akdavut, a long poem, a piyut, in Aramaic praising God. It concludes with, God exalted from beginning to end, was pleased with us, and gave the Torah. Sephardim read Azharot, which lists the positive commandments of the first day on the first day and the negative commandments on the second day. Second, eating dairy foods. What is the origin of the custom of eating dairy on Shavuot? It is not ancient. The Torah mentions the many animal offerings which were eaten by the people. The Talmud also records eating meat on Shavuot. Quote, on Shavuot, Rabbi Yosef would say, prepare me a third born calf, which is the best kind, saying, if it were not for the influence of this day, how many Yosefs would there be in the marketplace? That is, 
I would be just an ordinary person, not learned in Torah, which was given on that day. Another instance in the Talmud. Ulla said that Resh Lakish said, if one set aside 10 beasts for his festival peace offering and offered five on the first day of the festival, he may offer the second five on the second day. In fact, the sages had a saying, en simcha ella bebasar ve'yayin. There is no rejoicing except with meat and wine. This is a custom, not a law. The earliest reference to eating dairy on Shavuot is called Bo, a 13th century opus on Jewish law, probably by Rav Aharon ben Yaakov HaKohen of Lunel. Quote, there is an established custom to eat honey and milk on Shavuot, since the Torah is compared to honey and milk, as it is written in the Song of Songs, honey and milk are under your tongue. Why eat dairy? Many reasons have been offered. John Cooper is in 1994 book, Eat and Be Satisfied, A Social History of Jewish Food, writes, According to Kalonimos Ben Kalonimos, the 14th century Jews of Provence used to eat a specially prepared honey cake in the shape of a ladder on Shavuot. Later in Germany, the cake was made with seven rungs, symbolizing the seven spheres rent by the Almighty when he ascended to give the law. So to the earlier 13th century Provence philosopher, Jacob ben Abba Marie Antoli, asserted that it was customary for Jews to partake of milk and honey on Shavuot, as these foods were compared with the sustenance derived from the Torah. In Central and Eastern Europe, dairy foods replaced the honey cake of Provence on Shavuot, partly because there was an abundance of milk at this time in the year and partly because dairy dishes were the standard festive food at that time of year in several parts of Germany. There are also mystical reasons. The book Hag HaShavod says, why is Torah likened to honey and milk? Honey comes from a bee, which is not kosher, and milk comes from a live animal whose meat is forbidden until the animal is slaughtered. But honey and, both honey and milk, therefore, allude to the power of Torah which can transform a solid soul into one of holiness and purity. Also, the gematria of milk, halav, in Hebrew is 40. It reminds us of the three sets of 40 days that Moses spent on Mount Sinai to receive the Torah. There were also 40 generations from Moses who recorded the written Torah to Ravina and Rav Ashi who completed the Talmud. Finally, the Talmud begins and ends with the letter Mem, which has a gematria of 40. Also, the Midrash notes that Mount Sinai is also known as Har Gavnunim, the mountain of majestic peaks. The Hebrew phrase, the Hebrew word for cheese is Gevina, which has the same root. Gevina has a gematria of 70, corresponding to the 70 faces of Torah. This connects Torah and Sinai with milk. Also, before the Torah was given to the Israelites in the deserts, the laws for the ritual slaughtering of animals, or shehita, were not known. So to be on the safe side, they simply ate dairy meals. Another reason is that receiving the Torah was like being born again. So we celebrate by eating baby food, namely milk. Finally, the Torah says, on your holidays of Shavuot, when you offer new grain to God. The initials of the four Hebrew words spelled mehalav, from milk pointing to eating dairy on Shavuot. Sephardic Jews, however, eat both dairy and meat on Shavuot. Rabbi Ovadia Yosef, who used to be chief Sephardic rabbi of Israel, wrote in 1964, our custom is to eat some dairy, and after rinsing out our mouths, we eat meat. It is a mitzvah to eat meat on Yom Tov to fulfill the obligation of being happy in the holiday, on the holiday, because there is no happiness unless there is meat. So the meat meal follows the milk meal. These two meals represent the two loaves of bread, which were part of the Bikurim, or first fruits, offering at the temple service on Shavuot. The Talmud says that the Torah has 365 negative commandments, corresponding to the 365 days of the year. The Zohar adds that they are matched one for one. So which is Shavuot? The Torah gives the answer, quote, bring Bikurim, first fruits, to God's holy temple. Don't cook a kid in his mother's milk. Why are these two commandments side by side? 
Well, the first day for bringing Bikurim is Shavuot. So the second half of that verse is the negative commandment corresponding to Shavuot. Thus, on Shavuot, we eat two meals, one of milk and one of meat, taking care not to mix the two. Also, we do not use the same loaf of bread for a meat meal and then later at a milk meal, less some of the meat splatters on the bread. The Jews of Aleppo, Syria, had a custom of eating a light dairy meal on the first night to facilitate staying up all night studying. Here are some popular Shavuot foods. For Ashkenazim, cheeses, cheesecake, blintzes, kreplach. For Sephardim, small crispy cheese pies named Sambusek, cheese ravioli named Kelsones, pancakes with cheese named Atayef, dough with butter and sugar named Kahe, and seven heavens, a seven-layer cake called Sietes Cielos. The Jews of Egypt, like me, ate geese in a local herb soup called Melocheia. There was a meat meal at night and a dairy meal during the day. All eat of the seven species native to Israel, barley, wheat, dates, figs, olives, grapes, and pomegranates. The latter because rabbis said they contained 613 seeds, the number of commandments in the Torah. Yemenite Jews have no tradition of eating dairy food. Third, reading the Book of Ruth. It is customary to read it on Shavuot because the action is set at harvest time. It's also interpreted as being motivated by Ruth converting and accepting the Torah, just as the Jews did at Mount Sinai. Also, King David, who descended from Ruth, was born and died on Shavuot. Traditionally, converting to Judaism just to marry a Jew is not acceptable. Yet many conversions are motivated by an emotional attachment to Jews. Indeed, listen to the impassioned speech Ruth gave to her mother-in-law, Naomi. Quote, Do not entreat me to leave you or to keep from following you. For where, wherever you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die and there be buried. The Lord may do so and so to me and more besides if even death separates me from you. Note that she does not talk about her love of gods, of Torah, of commandments, or of Israel. She talks only about her love of Naomi. Fourth, decorating with greenery. The Midrash says, the whole world was created only for the sake of the Torah. God saw a single rose-colored flower to wit Israel. He took it and smelled it when he gave the Israelites the, the Ten Commandments, and his spirits were calm when they said, we will do and we will listen. At that time, the Holy One said, the orchard shall be saved on account of this flower. For the sake of the Torah and of Israel, the world shall be saved. From this, the tradition emerged that Mount Sinai blossomed with flowers right before the giving of the Torah. Also, baby Moses was found among the bulrushes in the Nile River on Shavuot, the 6th of Sivan. Many families decorate homes and synagogues with plants, flowers, and tree branches. The earliest mention of this custom is by the Maharil from 15th century Germany. Some also decorate the bima as a chuppah, because on Shavuot, the matchmaker, Moses, brought the bride, Israel, to the chuppah, Mount Sinai, to marry the bridegroom, gods, with the Torah as the ketubah, the marriage contracts. Some Sephardim read the ketubah by Rabbi Israel ben Moses Najara as part of the service. Some Hasidim adopted this custom. The Mishnah says that God judges the world four times a year to determine if it is worthy of additional sustenance. Quote, four times a year the world is judged on Passover for grain, on Shavuot for fruit trees, on Rosh Hashanah for life, and on Sukkot for water. So the Magen Avraham from 17th century Poland said that greenery should be placed in the synagogue on Shavuot to remind us to pray for fruit trees. Fifth, studying Torah all night on the eve of Shavuot. An increasingly popular custom is to, to stay up all night on the eve of Shavuot and study Torah until dawn. It is called Tikkun Lel Shavuot, or Repair of the Night of Shavuot. Why do we do it, and why is it called that? 
The Midrash explains that when the Israelites were about to receive the Torah, they were sleeping and God had to awaken them with thunder and lightning. Therefore, we stay up studying that night to make amends for our ancestors and show how happy and appreciative we are to have received the Torah. The Midrash says, quote, It says in Exodus, For the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people. Israel slept that entire night because the sleep of Shavuot is pleasant and the night is short. Rabbi Yudan said, Not a flea worried them. God came and found them sleeping. So he began to rouse them with trumpeters, as it says in Exodus, and it came to pass on the third day that there was thunder and lightning. And Moses roused Israel and brought them out to meet the supreme king of kings, the holy one, blessed be he, as it says in Exodus, and Moses brought forth the people to meet God. And then God went from before them till he reached Mount Sinai, as it is written in Exodus, now Mount Sinai was altogether in smoke. It was for this that God taunted them through the mouth of Isaiah, saying, Why is that? Why is it that when I came, no man was there? When I called, no one was there to answer. The custom is based on the Zohar, which states that the original pious ones would not sleep that night, and they toiled in Torah. Quote, When Israel drew near to Mount Sinai, that dew that descends from the supernal points came down in its fullness and purified them, so that their filth left them and they became attached to the Holy King and the community of Israel and received the Torah. Any man who does not count those seven complete weeks, the Omer, so as to qualify himself for purity is not called pure. But if a man has reached this day in purity and has not lost counts, then it behooves him on this night to study the Torah and to preserve the special purity to which he has attained on that night. The pious ones of old used not to sleep on this night, but they used to study the Torah. What to study is generally left up to the individual. Some groups have the, have the participants take turns in presenting a short Devar Torah. A canonical reading package has evolved that includes excerpts from all major Jewish sources as follows. First, read from the Torah three to seven verses from the beginning and the end of each of the 54 weekly Torah portions. Some important sections should be read in full, such as the days of creation in Genesis, the Exodus and the Song of the Sea, the giving of the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai, and the historical review in Deuteronomy and parts of the Shema. Second, read from the prophets, three to seven verses from the beginning and end of every book. However, the reading from Ezekiel should be the entire first chapter, which talks about the Merkava, or fiery chariot, and the readings from Treyasar, or the Twelve Prophets, considered as one book, should be specific verses from Hosea, Habakkuk, and Malachi. Third, read from the writings, the Book of Ruth in full, as well as five specific Psalms, 1, 19, 68, 119, and 150. Fourth, read from the Mishnah, or Oral Law, the beginning and the end of each of the 63 tractates with some important chapters in full. Fifth, read Sefer Yetzirah, the Book of Creation. It is the oldest Kabbalistic text, about 2,000 years old. Sixth, read the list of the 613 commandments, the Tariag. Maimonides' list is the most authoritative. Finally, read from the Zohar, the Book of Jewish Mysticism, excerpts bearing on the subject with opening and concluding prayers. The whole reading is divided into 13 parts, after each of which Kaddish de Rabbanan is recited. Some have called Shavuot the forgotten holiday, because its celebration is eclipsed by the more colorful celebrations of the other holidays. It's up to us to revive it. So, Hag Sameach, study well, and enjoy Jesus.